power tool you see me holding there. Is this a flight version? This is not okay, so I can play around with this one. Um, <laughs> it's probably the one I'm holding there, I bet you, right? Are you there? So that one that I'm holding there, I'm holding right here. So this tool we used uh, to practice, this was a mini power, we call this the mini power tool. Mini because our other power tool is a big tool, uh, the pistol grip tool, which had it was high torque, went up to 60 RPM. This one went up to, what did we get, about a 180? Did we get, we got how fast did this go? It went up to 300 RPM, now he tells me. <laughs> no, so it went up to 300, really? No kidding, I thought, okay. Boy, how easily we forget. This would go up to, th really? 300 RPM? I thought 180 was a, was a, 200 sounds better, but what's the truth? This is the National Air and Space Museum. Well, we really just could go up to the, the flight, 300 RPM, wow. Okay, 300 RPM on this guy, and uh, so it allowed us to do these, these small screws. It, it gave us a better feel. The other tool is kind of bulky and big, but this gave us a better feel if we, if we really had the, the, the little, that little baby screw in, engaged so we could, we could uh, pull the trigger at, at, with uh, high speed and, and, and do this job because we had lots of fasteners to undo. Um, it also had a ring of lights in the front too so we could, and we could illuminate what we're looking at in the, in the, in the darkness. If you, got, you know, if you get a little dark inside the telescope during a the, the sunset and so on. So um, this was the tool we trained with. The, the one we used in space was exactly like this. Exactly, right? Same everything. Okay. Um, and then we had these, we wanted to be able to change our bits out easily because we had lots of different sizes of screws. So Justin and his team, uh, Ed Rezac and these other guys that are, are scattered throughout, this, throughout here and somewhere in the area uh, tonight, they all designed these, these things for us to use. These were different uh, bits that we used to take out the different size screws. And they, they in, invented this special bit carrier so that we could get these bits out instead of usually changing out a bit was a bit of an involved process. But since we had to do it so often, they made it so it was much easier using this tool and this caddy. And we removed a couple screws, put some anchors in, and then attached. Once that hand, remember the handrail has to come off. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Handrail comes off. We put some anchors in and we attach this plate to it. No debris at all is allowed inside of it. We have to be really careful that the rub or pump or doing that we weren't supposed to there to create any debris inside the telescope once we open those doors. And um, so now we're going to take all these screws out and we don't want to lose any of them. So the, the team came up with the idea if we could get this plate on there somehow. So this plate has a bunch of holes on it. Can you, I'll hold it over my shoulder like this, okay? And you can see all these holes that it has in it. Each one of these holes lines up with a fastener, with a screw that was on the the electronics board cover. So we took very carefully removed four bigger screws on the outside, put some guide studs in there. What, what do we have here? Do we have this is the disposal bit. Sorry, this is my so this is where I put the old hand rod. This is the flight unit? This is the flight one? This is my garbage bag from space. <laughs> where we put the, the handrail went inside of here and this thing expands. No, no, you're not. God would pay for this one. So uh, American people pay for this one, right? You're not even smiling. You're not going to let this thing go, are you? You just stay away. Okay, fair enough. All right. So the handrail, uh, the handrail went in here. But we had, um, we had some. Uh, we took out four screws on on these on on each the, the extremes of where this panel was, and put some big studs inside of it, and then installed this on top, okay? So once this was in front of me and secured, um, each one of these holes lined up with one of the fasteners that I was able to remove with the power tool. And so the hole here is big enough so that the tool head could go through it, right? The bit could go through it, but that the screw would not come out. So the screws and the washers and anything else that was kicked up was floating inside of it. So what I was looking at was through all these windows were little screws floating around. So they were kept inside by this capture plate. And when the last one came off, then the whole plate could be removed. So that's no, they were not magnetized. So they just floated inside of there. And they, those holes were, like I said, small enough, but large enough so that you could get the tool through it, but small enough so that nothing could come out. So everything was captured. So then, okay, they were floating. So when you took the plate off, the plate is now attached to this. Okay, so the, what we did, the follow, yeah, so what happened is now this, the plate was here, 
So we attached this to the side of the plate with these guide studs that we had, right? These four places. So now they're together. And as we remove all of these screws, the panel, which is on my side now, comes off the instrument and goes with this thing. And in between the panel on the instrument and this capture plate, we're floating inside of each one of these windows, the screws and the washers and anything else that was kicked up. Once we got the, uh, the front of the board off, we then had to remove this, uh, this, uh, the power supply, which was one of these boards. And it would have 120 pins. Did I get my remember correctly? There's 120 pins in the back of each one, the back of that power supply. So they had to be undocked from those 120 pins. And then we had to install a new one in. And so they invented this tool, which would give us some leverage grabbing onto that board. And then you can see the, the dials are large here, right? So you can do this with a gloved hand. Um, they have little arrows in here. And because I was doing this task, they had to remind me, open and close. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we use this to go and grab, lock onto that, uh, that power supply, one of those boards, the top one, wasn't it? The, the top one, grab onto it and drive it off with this thing, and then insert a new one. So all these tools, over 100 new tools were designed for this one particular task. And uh, uh, it was 25 years since it launched, and I don't know if we're going to get another 25 years out of it. What do you guys think? Still going. So we'll see how long we can get it to keep going and maybe have another anniversary party here years from now. But I feel very, very lucky to have gotten a chance to be a part of that Hubble family in my career as an astronaut. Wouldn't have traded it for anything. Um, and I feel very privileged to be here at the National Air and Space Museum with you, uh, with all of you here tonight. Thank you for coming. We have.